So when should you use the dehaze tool in Lightroom? Well, probably never, but maybe sometimes? So a few years ago, Lightroom added the dehaze tool and you can find it there in the presence section with the clarity, texture, saturation, vibrance. And it really is a powerful tool. A slight adjustment in either direction can make a big difference to your picture. But you gotta be careful how you use it. You know, Bill and I really don't like editing too much. We usually basically kind of go as far as we can in some situations and then always dial it back just a little bit so it doesn't have an overprocessed look. And if you use this tool, if you use the dehaze tool, you really can end up with an overprocessed look. So let's take a look at some examples of using the tool on just ordinary images when you really wouldn't want to use it and then a couple of situations where you really do want to use the dehaze tool. So basically what the dehaze tool does is it, it adds a lot of contrast, it darkens some of the image, it adds saturation. It does all kinds of things, but it's a really a heavy handed slap to the entire image. So let me add just a little bit of dehaze to this, this image here. And you can see even with a plus 15, 16, it's already getting a lot more edited. You know, it has a, a highly edited look to it. And as I slide it up even further here, it gets even worse. It looks like, you know, a kind of a garbagey over edited image. Let me bring it back down to zero. And you can see it just looks a nice natural image. You don't need to use it. Now, a lot of the settings that you would use with the dehaze filter, a lot of the adjustments you can make separately, you know, between you can adjust the contrast however you want, and you can use the brush to actually add it only to certain parts if you want here and there. So you really don't need the dehaze to your general images. It's like I said, a really hard edit to the entire image. Even if you're only using it on some parts, it's going to give it a, over edited look that really is unappealing on most on most images. And while that may look good on your computer screen, you're not gonna like the effect afterwards. When you look at the image later on and you see how edited, highly edited it looks. Here's another shot, I'm gonna drag the dehaze slider up here. And you can see it just gets no, kind of ugly. It doesn't really have the natural feel that you want an image like this to have. But when do you want to use the dehaze filter? Really, there's two or maybe three situations that you want to use it. One, the first two really are when there's haze in the atmosphere. That's basically what you're dealing with. That's what the dehaze is for. And it's either by you know conditions where it's foggy or smoggy or whether you're shooting through a lot of atmosphere. So let me explain. I'll show you a couple of examples here. So when I was in China, mostly in Beijing, the air was Thick. I mean, there was situations where you really couldn't see more than a few hundred feet in front of you. So in a lot of images like this, I had to apply a dehaze filter. So this one I applied dehaze to. Let me take it off and show you what it looks like. This is without the dehaze filter. So basically, a lot of my images were like this. It was just kind of a blanket fog over everything. So even with the dehaze tool used here, I was able to capture a lot of the details in the bricks and everything, but still there was nothing I could do about the background. The background was just totally blown out smog. I couldn't get any of the details here. And that was with a lot of the shots that I took there. Here's another shot with a very similar example. This is without any dehaze tool applied at all. And I can apply the dehaze tool here and you can see there's nothing I can do about the sky, the background. It's just all blown out white, but I'm able to capture all the detail in the buildings and the trees. Here's a shot from the city of Xi'an where it was less smoggy there. Uh, this shot is without the dehaze tool applied. And I'm, let me apply some dehaze here and you can see it makes just enough difference. It kind of cuts the haze out of the foreground. The haze that's left in the background is kind of atmospheric, a little bit nice, gives the picture a little bit of depth. So I like it there, but I like cutting that dehaze out of at least the foreground. So that's use number one. If you find yourself in hazy, smoggy, foggy conditions, it really cuts through that and brings out a lot of the detail in your shot. And so a second situation where you're gonna to wanna to use the dehaze tools when you're shooting through a lot of atmosphere. So even if the atmosphere isn't smoggy or foggy, if you're shooting a telephoto lens, something that's very far away, you're shooting through a lot of air. So basically, you're compressing all of that air to whatever's between you and your subject, whatever's between your lens and your subject, you're capturing all that air in your image and it can cause a hazy effect. So this is a shot of Space Mountain, shot from the top of Mickey's Fun Wheel uh, across the way in California Adventure. 
And without the dehaze tool here, you can see everything's got kind of a washed out look to it. Let me put the dehaze filter back on and you see at least what's in the foreground sharpens up. You can see the detail there. The haze still exists in the background, which is kind of nice. You can kind of see how it's layered there, trailing off into the background. It gives the image a sense of depth. Uh, but at least to be able to pull it away from the foreground makes the image look much nicer. Here's a shot of Matterhorn Mountain from the same spot. You can see if I take the dehaze off and you get that same hazy washed out look to it. Let me put it back on again. And you can see it sharpens up your subject in the foreground. And the other situation that you might want to use the dehaze filter in the other direction actually to decrease it a little bit is with portraits. You definitely don't want to add dehaze filter to a portrait. It's going to really give it a contrasty, harsh look. But dragging it back in the other direction can give it a little bit of a nice, softer, dreamy look to it. Here's a shot here without any dehaze applied to it. And I'm just going to grab the slider and drag it to the left a little bit. Uh, you can see it kind of gives it a nice, if you're going for that effect, if you're going for that sort of a washed out, bright highlights, white, dreamy look, that's what you're going to get here. So in certain portraits, it can actually look very nice. So you can use it, but use it sparingly. I find basically the only time I really use it is when I'm trying to get through an image and at the very end, it's the last thing that I'll do. I'm just not happy maybe with the uh, the clarity of the image or the details and I'll just, I'll put a plus 10 on a dehaze slider and that'll make the difference sometimes. So again, it's a very powerful tool. Know how to use it, when to use it, and it could be a great part of your editing, especially shooting in difficult foggy, hazy situations. So I hope you found that interesting. We're gonna put a couple of videos here to other Lightroom editing tips and techniques and stuff. You can check those out. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.